that stuff. Let's uh, let's see how it goes. Let's get bit. So we know right off the bank it's four foot deep because we just. Well, I guess that ain't four foot. I guess that's just a couple feet, but I don't care either way. Hey, that little balloon over there that I got uh, uh, perch on. He just got excited. He just did a little, little dance. And usually, I'm gonna go ahead and take my glasses off. Okay. Now what'll happen here is as the sun goes down, these big stripers will come through and terrorize all the fish, all the bait fish. This right now is usually when I catch my big stripers on bluegill in this dam even when they're not running no water. Right when that sun's going down, there's something about it that's magical. I hope it happens today on this live. That'd be cool. I want a, uh, they did this uh, jelly bean drawing at our, this little church thing we did. I'll be dropping a video because it was pretty cool. They took a helicopter in two rounds and dropped out eggs. I think they said like 3,000 eggs for 100 kids or something like that. Anyway, they had this little jar of jelly, uh, jelly beans. They said, guess. Well, part of my number is 525. Part of my number is 525. So I was like, no, it doesn't look like 525. I looked at it. I said, you know what, 532. That's how many it looks like is in there to me. So I wrote, wrote it down, wrote down my number and all my information. They called me up, and I won. So I got to go pick that up. But right now we're just waiting on this people to thin out and I'm gonna pick you guys up and we're gonna walk down there together. We're gonna slowly start dragging our stuff that way. Right now I just want some more people to thin out before we do that. And uh, I'm excited. I really don't wanna move my rods right from this spot because I'm trying to catch a striper. I'm gonna aim you guys so you guys can see the rods in the background. I got them locked down in rocks. Whoa. You guys almost took a nasty dump. Anyway, uh, there's the rods. There's one. You can't really see the other one, but it's back here. It's orange. It doesn't show up good on this camera for whatever reason. I don't know if I can zoom you guys. Yeah, I can. There it is right there. Okay. And But anyway, then we got the balloon out there, but it's purple, so I don't really don't think you guys will pick it up. Hey everybody, I appreciate your support on here and watching my videos and stuff. The other video, you couldn't comment on it. Have you ever scraped the scales off the perch and toss it out? When you do that, it releases more fish oil. You know what? We're gonna do that tonight then. We are gonna do that. Does it work good with shad too? I ain't never done that with shad or um, perch. I usually just um, hook them on there, but hey, that balloon has got rings around it, guys. That perch is getting excited about something. What are you doing, baby? Boo. 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 What's your mama doing? Yes, sir. Well, go get you one of them fishing poles and start casting around out there. Hey, you want to help me carry my stuff down there? Like when more or less people leave, I want to carry my stuff and go down that way. But I'm waiting on this uh, sundown bite right now. And we're going to be here tomorrow morning. We're going to stay the night here, so we'll get the premium spot. Hopefully they run about two or 3,000 cubic feet a second, water per second. So we'll get on that morning bite and then uh, you guys probably won't see me for a week. <coughs> Going out of town for a little bit. But I'll be back. I'll be back with some videos at that. What's that, baby? Those are... Here, let's pan the camera around let them see it, too. Those are, I believe, pelicans. Everywhere here. <coughs> I'm live. 
<laughs> I'm live. She's telling on me, you guys. We had us work our butts off. Yeah, hi. By ourselves. Hello, everybody. And then we had to climb down. The car guy, 57. We got to get a big one. Yes, sir. Uh, the car guy, 57, I'm good. Uh, Randy Wilson, uh, man, I want to get one of those drones, but I've seen people that have little like RC boats that uh, dump the bait, and they'll do that. And someone told me the fifth gate, one, two, three, four, five. So that fifth gate, uh, there's a big hole there is what I hear. And people do that a lot here. They drive it out there and they catch really big ones. And But you can't cast there. You can't drive a boat up there because there's a, the red signs. And so that'd be about the only way is a drone or a, um, or one of them little boats, like 50 bucks. We might, ha we might uh, have to do that when I get back. We might just have to get one of them boats. That'd be a pretty good video, pretty cool. I really want to get in a carp fishing. Tell me what you guys think about that. I don't know why I like catching them. They pull hard and I throw most of my fish back anyways. And I like using carp for bait. And so I don't think it would hurt to uh, have some carp for just around, you know. Did you see that? What, baby? Do you see my butt? I fell in the water. Good job. I was down there trying to get the thrown at unstuck. Yeah. He's got me figured out, guys. I see two, four. I see four people leaving. Bombo clat. I don't know what that means. You the car guy 57? Huh? You the car guy 57? No. Oh, okay. Giat. Yo, giat. I don't know what giat means, bro. I appreciate all the comments, though. We got more leaving. The more that leave, the more better. Hey, how you doing? Gabrielle Wages. I'm um, what? It's a guy. What are you stitching on? <laughs> what? Huge bum. Are you talking about me or my daughter? Huge bum. Which one of us? You're in the white shirt? Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah, I can see you on the camera too. Right there. Yeah, I did. When? Let's see the ocean. I just noticed that. We're going to see the ocean. Very soon. A-L-R-S-N-M. I don't know what that means. All right. What's S-N-M? Oh, okay. Very, very soon. What's what? That's my throwing net. It rolled down that hill. <coughs> yeah. Oh, here comes baby. Come on. Uh, Kylie, come over here and talk to everybody. What's the yellow, that yellow container? That's my bait bucket. 
You got to come talk to him because I got to go help her get down the hill. All right, you guys watch my poles. I'll be right back. I can't get any of my girls to come talk to you guys. Yes, sir, I am top of the world. Let's see. That's been kind of long. more people filtering out guys we're about to start making our move i'm gonna have to go back up there and get my headlamp catch the fish i'm trying working on it well i'm not doing that until i move everything all the way down there hmm. i want to get my shit set up you know you can hey you know there's a bridge right there right you don't have to walk through all this What? She won't do it. She'll go with you. My wife and my daughter don't want to talk to you guys. They won't make my ratings go up. But I'll just flip the camera around. Now you guys. <laughs> there they are. Prettiest girls in the world sitting in bird shit inside of the river. Now you guys get to look at my ugly mug. Yeah. Yeah, it flips. <laughs> they know me. Matt, stop. What? You wanted me to come over there? I'll come talk to him. You wanted me to come over there? She's gonna come over here and be abusive. You guys, she likes picking on old people. <laughs> that's that's her pastime. She likes beating on old folks. Oh look, see now it jumped to 11, 11 people watching instead of seven, Kai. <laughs> that bobber's going. Hey, that bobber's going. Slow down. You might have to come man the man the phone. Uh, whatever, however you gotta do it. I'll have to run down there and grab that rod and bring it up here if it gets fish on. Or I'll try to turn the camera first or whatever I gotta do. Yep. 
You heard that song, She's a Man Eater? She's a man beater. <laughs> She's a man beater. <laughs> and she punches like a horse. Quit. <laughs> Be nice. Kelly, please don't fall. I can't let them I'm see me push a girl down on the public eye. We're just playing, guys. <laughs> Oh no, she's she's a good one. <laughs> she's violating. Yeah, no, it's gonna take a hell of a lot more than that to hurt me. She wants to hug and make up. Yeah, yeah, she just wants. She really just wants a hug. Anytime now, them stripers be coming through here, huh? I mean, if we could, I would. Don't let it slide. That jab to the stomach. I fought Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I got hit by a bunch of big guys. That little thing ain't gonna hurt me. Caught her. She's caught in the net. At least I didn't fall. <laughs> no hitting in the stomach. Well, not while I'm drinking beer. She she likes to pinch a lot too. <laughs> I have bruises on the inside of my arm like that, but I can't get her. She's too squirmy. <laughs> That uh, that balloon out there with that perch on it, still doing out there, out there doing a little jig. Hey, and my uh, my uh, my other rod. Hey, you guys. Hey, she left her phone up the hill. Oh. I was hoping she'd go get me a knife, but. I don't have my purse. You got one in your purse? I don't have my purse. Oh. Did she go back up the hill? Yeah. Kai! Hey, get a knife out of the live well while you're up there. No, never mind. Hiding James. Let's see my six pack, buddy. I got a whole keg. Six pack's long gone, bud. I got a six pack like this. 12 pack. For everybody wondering, my hit back just not on the camera. I can't be having that on the public eye. But that's how we that's how we play. We just joking around. It's all in good fun.
that's my baby girl. I know for sure I won't ever have to worry about uh, Is it all right for you to rape my wife? Which one do you think's my wife? Because my wife's sitting over here. <laughs> that was my daughter. Yeah, go ahead, bud. In a good way or a bad way, because she only weighs like a, what do you weigh, buck 30? What? She said no, she said, she said she broke my scale. I don't know if that's the, oh, I'm getting hard, so it must be in the good way. She broke the hot scale. No, no, yeah, and the thing about it is, is, not too many women will go out and, uh, go camping with the man when it's like 30 degrees outside but uh she do hey you've got one yeah we're just we're needing people to filter on out of here and as soon as they do we're gonna go that way I'm gonna have to go get some water in that bucket real quick. Oh no, you're good, that car guy, or the car guy, 57. Let's see the ocean. We'll be seeing the real ocean next week. Yeah, it is pretty nice out there. What? Uh, we could. You hear that? My wife wants to sleep down here on cots. We could sleep with the fishing pole one in each hand. What's that talking about? Look at those freaking clouds. Look at that sunset. Look at that. You'll be there? I have no idea. Yeah, we'll leave you guys out facing that way. You guys can watch the sunset with us. How about that? We'll center it up a little bit. First fish. Yep, you got the first fish on my video. Hey, old boy down there. He's watching my live. And he's fishing. He caught the first fish. He caught the first fish. What now? Well, uh... Most everyone uh, on the other end of this is packing up. Yeah, you can go watch Disney movies if you want to, but. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we're waiting on these people down here to move. As they filter out and leave, we're going to start working our way down that way. There's a bunch of them leaving too. I might just go reel up my rods and go set down there. I'm gonna go get some water in this bucket real quick though. All right, now we're gonna get some water in that bucket. I'm gonna reel in that rod. I'm gonna reel in that rod. We're gonna take our bait off, throw them in the bucket of water. <coughs> and we're gonna go down that way because everybody's leaving and that's what we want.
What does it mean? You lost me at Toto. My husband is is handsome and stupid. <laughs> hey, it's hard to be both. You can't be good looking and be smart if you're a guy. It's one or the other. Hey, what is that? Is that a... What kind of fish is it? That's bait. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, Randy Wilson. Just use your jujitsu. <laughs> she licked it. I did not. <laughs> All right, we got one more bait to reel in. Okay. Then we're going to start moving down there. They thinned out pretty good. We might have to wait a while for some of them to leave, but whatever. Our leader broke, but the good thing is there ain't no shortage of uh, <coughs> there's no shortage of leader line at the dam. And I put a couple hooks in the bottom of that bucket. I should probably throw this jig out there for a minute. See if I can uh get on anything. I knew something told me to just throw a jig out there for a minute. Come on, let it go. So now we're going to get some water in here.
Got another one. <coughs> another little premium bait. <laughs> Let me catch up with these comments real quick. <coughs> Just throwing out little hair jigs. <coughs> Jig head, blue body, and a yellow tail. <coughs> Shimano, Sienna, 2500. On an Ozark Trail, cheap rod. Six pound test line. Really, my old lady should be fishing for these while I'm doing something different. Step over this way. We're gonna go get some damn cats. 
All right, damn river boys. We gotta get bait first. All right, we got bait, we got rods, we got gear. This is our bait we got. We should be good to go. Let's rock and roll. Hell, I'm gonna even throw this drum. He looks fresh. He's on the bank dried up when I got here, but I'm throwing him in the bucket too. You never know until you throw. All right. Let's get you guys turn like this. Boom, boom. Don't want the bait getting too hot. Stick your beer in the bucket with the bait. Actually, I can't. Kylie, text her this stuff because my phone's live. What's that? I need a, a couple big catfish hooks. They're in the weight box. Okay. A couple big weights. And my bait knife. And my meat hunter rod. Big hunter, big hook. And just like two or three of weights. I don't need that heavy weight. guys here we go hey uh in, the, in one of the bags my uh my can't my headlamps in there uh i think our camping bag our uh clothing bag all right guys we got our red headlamp what state am i in i'm in oklahoma i don't know if you've seen any of the fish on my other on my channel regularly but I catch some hogs. I've been slow at it because me and the fam's going on vacation this week. So I haven't been uh, on it that much. So I've been saving every penny. And uh, what's, yeah, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm at Keystone Dam right now. <laughs> Here's where we're going. I want to go fish that, that wall when everybody leaves. And I, I want to put some... Um, I want to put some baits up against that wall and uh, try to get on some flatheads. There's also giant stripers in here. I caught some big ones. And uh, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, I try. Uh, I don't, I just really just flying by the seat of my pants, brother. I just, whenever I get a chance, I just started going live. I got over a thousand subscribers. They want 4,000 watch hours to monetize me. Uh, and I don't necessarily want to say I want to do this for a living, but I, at some point I want it to pay for itself. But even if it don't, I'm gonna keep doing it. And I'm gonna keep recording it just cause I enjoy it. But I just think it's cool that we have the opportunity to go out and really live the dream. Uh, go fishing and get paid for it. Cause I was doing this before YouTube was a thing. When I was a kid, I say a kid, 15, 16 years old, I get dropped off at the dam and stay the night for two or three nights in a row. There's a little blue state park. I'll go there and get dropped off. I'd set crawdad traps and I'd eat crawdads cooked in beer cans and go catfishing for all day and all night. How are you doing? Pretty good. You have any luck today? No. no? Rockfish. Uh-oh. Anyway, are you, you guys are done for the day? Yes. Well, I guess I'm going to reckon I'm going to set up right here. Thank you. All right, guys. This looks like a pretty good spot to be set up at. I'm going to stick you guys right here. And uh, let's get some baits in the water.
we got a uh, 10 knot jackhammer hook. Yeah, it's definitely for fun. Uh, I'm a welder and I'm a contract, so I pretty well get to make my own schedule. So I just, I always go fishing anyways. That's why I became a contract welder, so I could go fishing whenever I wanted to. It was long before a YouTube thing. Uh, but it's just the funnest thing I can, it's fun. First bait going out, this big dude. I'm gonna take this hook and I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go on his belly. I'm gonna go right here to his, uh, I guess they call it the anal fin. I'm gonna go to his, right before his tail fin. And go right in there. That's it right there. That's a big bait. Up here on the bank, we might put that on a rod. Anyhow, that's one rod out. <laughs> Get you guys situated, put you about like right here. this little dude out there hooking him the same way now all these dudes have been little males so if you're from my area be here in about a week the big females be coming in thick thin uh, I'm just waiting on everybody to leave fishing Saskatchewan River in my home water PA is that like uh, Philadelphia I think or something <coughs> I usually don't fish this river I mean I do but Skip Jack Cindy's Outdoor Adventures what's up appreciate you stopping in This dam is a, uh, in Oklahoma, I don't know how it is in every other state, but this is a, a core dam and they have a contract with, um, they have a contract with uh, the electric company. And so you never know uh, what the water's gonna be doing here, but you can guarantee at some point in the day they're gonna run. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anyhow, the uh, 
core owns this lake and they can't got a contract with this dam for the electric company so they have to run so much water every day it doesn't matter how low the lake is and uh i don't know i don't really i don't really like that um and the reason being is because the river never stabilizes it's always either open or it's it's never always open or shut it's open up every day for a couple hours and then the river never gets to stabilize that being said there are a lot of big fish caught here and they told me that the dam hadn't been going which is okay uh, and but the lake here is always up and down it's never stable so it's not my favorite uh, it's not my cup of tea I, uh, I like Uligal Lake Uligal is my favorite lake um, I catch a lot of big flatheads there, and I catch a lot of big blues there. Now, for Spoonbill, you guys have had to hurt uh, Sky Took Lake. Uh, up until like a week or two ago, they had the world record uh, Spoonbill, and every year they would beat their own record, or someone would beat their that record in the same lake. And so that's pretty cool, just being the home of that and having that going on here. Have a good day. Have a good day. And... Uh, I just think that's pretty cool. Missouri took it. It is what it is. Hey, I really appreciate it. I hope my wife gets back down here with that red lamp pretty quick so that way you guys can see what's going on. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but if you use a red light at nighttime, the bugs aren't attracted to red light. They can't see it, so bugs won't mess with you. Like if you light up a regular flashlight and you can still, when you light up with a red light, you can still see it on camera. And uh, so that's my go-to uh, when it's there's bugs outside is the red light. I like it a lot. I got a, right, a red headlamp, but I can just set it down and aim it the direction I'm fishing. And uh, it does me pretty good. My wife, she's a trooper. She She sticks it out with me. Those pelicans sure are pretty. I like to have a big old palm with a fountain in it with some of the pelicans. I'm gonna grab this cold beer real quick, guys. Let me guys a little bit more this way. My wife and my daughter went to go get me a bait knife and a my meat hunter catfish rod i don't know if you guys have heard of meat hunter but and i don't knock any kind of rod if you can see i got all different kinds of catfish rods but uh, i used to only run meat hunters and but i wanted to show everybody that you could catch catfish on uh, you know, like the catfish pro special and then that one's the build dance special and those two rods right there my wife bought me for valentine's day so i'll never not use them and but i used to use uh meat hunters only and that's because i've had them since i was a kid and i've been rough on stuff i leave i leave them out in the sun all summer leave them outside all winter and those paired with the okuma clx classic which i've outgrown that reel because it doesn't reel down fast enough for me uh and if fish is running at me it takes so long for me to catch up with the slack before i can get the hook to set i just feel like i outgrew them but uh Anyway, what I was getting at with that is I'm going to go back to the meat hunters because uh, they're made in Oklahoma. I'm from Oklahoma. And they're they're a heavy rod. They're not for fishermen that wants light tackle or none of that. They make a bump and stick. They make a, a, a meat hunter flex rod, which the parabolic bend on it, catching channel catfish is amazing. And then the one that my wife's bringing down here is more like a broomstick. It's a heavy rod. You can sling a two pound carp uh, with eight ounces of lead or a pound of lead for that matter. And I've literally reeled up whole trees this big around with limbs and everything off the bottom of the lake from 40 foot down, trying to break the line, but I'm pull, aiming the rod down and pulling up on it. Not breaking the line, uh, not breaking the rod. And uh, it was actually that day then, and I'd had those rods all my life. And it was that day about two years ago that I pulled that tree up and I was like, you know, I don't care what anybody says and it's not the most expensive rod they are absolutely not 
you can get in the game on one of them for about 50 bucks. That, but the longer they are or whatever, the more features they have, the, the price goes up pretty quickly. The ones I run are, uh, I like 10 foot ones because that way I can use them on my boat or on the bank. And they run about, I want to say that the last time I bought one, they were about 70 bucks a piece. They might be 100 by now, I don't know. You know, all that COVID stuff and everything that happened two or three or four years ago. Everything went up since then, but uh, that's just my opinion. I think they're the best rods uh, for catfishing ever made. I even took it when I was a kid. We went down to Panama, Florida. We rented a pontoon boat and we went out on the ocean. We bought some Okuma bait casters with the four foot rod, put 150 pound test power pro braided line on it and all that jazz. And I had a meat hunter with an Okuma Avenger reel on it, an 80 pound test line that I was using for snagging. And out of all those rods there, I caught four foot bull shark using that meat hunter and so and uh, at that point you know I wasn't doing no videos or nothing I may have been the first person yep sure enough Randy We could get bent at any minute and just touch a freaking tank. This is cool, man. I use Mad Cat's rods with pin squall tube reels. That's what I want. How fast is that pin squall? Um, I, I want to keep using my rods just because I've been using them since I was a kid. Uh, but um, that pin squall, two reels. Uh, can you tell me what the gear ratio or do you know how much slack they pick up per crank, per evolution of the handle? I've been using uh, on this rod. I keep the rods my wife buys me. I don't always run the same reels. Hey, Skip Jack Cindy's Outdoor Adventures, I appreciate it. I really do. Um, I'm running the uh, Alijos 300 by PC Fun. And uh, I haven't caught enough fish on it really to make up my mind one way or another, but it's good reel. So far, I've caught a spoonbill with it. Uh, I don't know that I've caught a catfish with it yet, but it's on there. We're trying. Uh, but I've looked, I, uh, I have a pin rod that I use for snagging. It's a rod and reel combo. It's a pin pursuit five. No, it's a unit. It's a bulletproof tank. I bought that combo specifically for snagging and that's almost all I use it for is just snagging. Hopefully if my wife's wife comes back down here. <coughs> Which way are you out? Uh, those two rods are just straight out. Okay. No, you're good. No, I, I, I guess I'm gonna find out, I guess, uh, what these people are fishing for at nighttime. They're fishing with jigs and stuff. Four, nine to one. Okay, so that's almost five. See those Okuma uh, CLX Classics is uh, four to one and it just, I never feel like, like uh, I use J hooks and I know everybody else likes circle hooks and I'm per perfectly fine with that. But I still mostly catch my fish in the corner of the mouth, top of the mouth, bottom of the mouth, just like the guys using circle hooks. I just, I like setting the hook. I know some, everybody just likes reeling down, but I'll tell you what my grandpa said. If we was all the same, we'd all be chasing grandma and that'd be a problem. So a little bit of diversity never hurts the world. And I don't, I don't eat most of the fish I catch. Most of them I turn them loose. I do keep um, stripers, hybrids, white bass, crappie, largemouth, uh, but I like catfish. They got a special place in my heart. Even the channel catfish that everybody else dogs on, I like them. 
just if you got if you put the right gear for the right fish like that rod i was catching bait on earlier one has six pound test but the one that i broke off the jig i broke my jig off i got a caught between rocks that rod only had four pound test on it and if you catch high uh white bass or sand bass on a four pound test they're a lot of fun like catching a big catfish on a big rod you know i just try to pair my line and my gear to the fish that i'm trying to catch for the most part and if you do that with channel cats they can be fun i think we might actually have enough light here that it may be all the lights are starting to come on we may be lit up enough this may work might work out uh there's still one guy over there at this at the spillway eventually you guys i'm gonna get you guys turned around i'll go ahead and flip it around let you guys see see i want to go uh cast right up against that wall I want to go cast up against those walls over there and in hopes that a flathead's just swimming through there uh, up against that wall hunting for bait. In my head, that's what they're doing, so that's what I want to happen. That is the game plan. Oh, 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 oh. That rod was going. That rod with that big rod, or the white one was getting hit. Now, <coughs> okay. Oklahoma, we haven't had, uh, I don't think we have any of those laws that come into effect yet. And, but they, I'm not saying that they won't. I, if they do, then I'll start using them. I, I have messed around with them, and my favorite one was uh, uh, the Gamakatsu Demon Circle or something like that. Uh, yeah, Randy, I like the Channel Cats. Uh, I eat them. We got a lake by my house. It's a little city lake. And when it floods there and the creeks are running, I can go back in there with my boat and I can hit 40 fish in a day, no problem. Uh, I do it almost every time it floods, matter of fact. Uh, I love fishing for them. Uh, like I said, I just try to gear my, put my gear, I try to gear my, use the gear appropriate for the size of fish I'm gonna be catching and it makes it a lot funner. Like uh, when I'm fishing there, you'll see me, I'll still use my big rods because there are big blues and big flags in there and I'll put big baits on those rods but I'll typically use a bunch of uh, bass rods with a shad heads or gut pocket or whatever, just little bitty chunks of bait, little bitty shad. And uh, I'll whack them over the head and it's a fun time, man. The channel cats fight different too. Blues, you'll be pulling them along and eventually they'll turn belly up and they'll come up, feel like you're dragging a tire through the water. Flatheads, they'll fight you all the way through. <coughs> but that's the thing about channel cats. They will too, when they get big, and I'm gonna say a big channel cat because I'm in Oklahoma. It's between seven and 14 pounds. And you catch a seven to 14 pound channel catfish, it's a, it's fun. Yeah, that bait on that big white rod either got really scared, which is a good thing. Something's down there picking on him. Or, uh, or he got smacked. We're just waiting for that rod to ease over. I'm gonna go over there and crank down on it. What is the best cat at Sahoma? Uh, channel cats, honestly, that's, uh, I've seen pictures of guys that have caught uh, big flatheads and big blue cats. But if you're talking numbers, um, channel cats. Uh, and I think it's cause the pretty water lake that's attached to it, they stock it with channel cats. So I don't know if they spawn and when it washes out, they all get flooded down in there. And, but uh, I posted a highlight reel on my channel and you'll see on the back corner of my boat, it's just stacked up with channel catfish. I caught them all there. Uh, here comes the wife and the daughter running down the hill. And, but uh, I'd rather catch a 20 pound channel over a 30 pound. Yes. Yeah, me too. No, thank you, here we go. We got that meat hunter.
That's a good one right there. She brought me a bucket of beer, bait knife. No. I hope that's what you were talking about. <laughs> Here's my meat hunter. It's just yellow, stainless steel guides. Oh, it's got an Okuma CLX Classic. I did some modifications to it. I took out the level wine system so I can cast further. Uh, we got my favorite hook on there, 10 aught Gamakatsu. Hang on, let me get you some. I don't know if it's gonna show up or not. There we go. 10 aught Gamakatsu. My favorite one. And then uh, we got a shorty rod, rod handle. <coughs> now we're gonna do a, I'm gonna cut me some bait real quick and get that third rod casted out. Yeah, they're my favorite ones. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, we're gonna turn this into a flapper bait. <coughs> hey, Indian River boys. Hey, check these knives out on Amazon. It's a Rapala bait knife. And uh, I think they're only like two or three bucks. That's a good knife. It's a stout blade and it stays sharp. We had a bait store near our house that carried them and then they quit, unfortunately. But there's a Woody's bait store that has them. I'm gonna keep this uh, down here. I'll show you when I'm done with him. Now I just cut his backbone out and then we got a little flapper bait here. I cut some big catfish on these two. I'm running two live baits and one uh, cut bait. And then I'm gonna hook him like this, right through the nose. Plenty of hook exposure. And then, uh, I'm gonna disappear for a second. I'm gonna run down this bank and fling this thing out there. There's a steep, this bank's a real steep bank. All right, we got three rods out. We can all see them in the camera. <coughs> I might cut this live off. First, I seen the bait cut that first. First, I seen it. Yeah, uh, so if my hand's a fish, this be in the head, this be in the tail. I start at the tail, and then I cut up towards the gills, flip it over, do the same thing, and then I twist the uh, twist the backbone out. It leaves the guts in there, puts plenty of scent in the water, and uh, I ain't even gonna take credit for it. Uh, I watch Richard Dean the fishing machine, and he cuts a flat bait like that out of a shad he only does it with shad but i do a crappie perch everything and uh it works good that's that's about uh when i'm fishing for big fish that's my favorite way to do it when we get in a couple weeks we might take you guys down to kerr dam i want to go down there and uh talk about skipjack i've only caught one at um Uluga dam and i've heard People talk about catching them um, from Keystone, and but Kerr, the river is a Arkansas River. It goes down to Kerr Lake, so then there's Kerr Dam, of course, and then uh, but that river is still the Arkansas River, and it's a locking dam. So anything that can go up in there, in theory, should be able to swim all the way up to this dam. 
but I don't know how many fish are lining up at the locking dam to go through there. But uh, what I was saying is I caught one at Uligal a long, long time ago, probably 12 years ago, in a throw net. I thought I caught a world record shad, never heard of a skipjack, and then finally someone, I was walking around the, at the dam showing him off, and everybody's like, there was one guy, and he was like, hey, man, that's not a, that's not a giant shad, that's a skipjack. And I was like, skipjack who? And uh, anyway, I ended up looking him up, and he was right. And But uh, that was the best night of catfishing I probably ever had in my life. And then uh, we heard about them. Someone told us that they was down below Kerr Dam, and I went down there, and I caught two rod and reel, but I want to go down there and get on some more of them. And then I want to bring them up to dams where I've, I've caught skipjack at, which would be Uluga. And uh, anyway, I'm ready to try it out. I'm ready to go get down there and get some, bring them back. Apparently someone else had the same idea as me about the flatheads, because it looks like the, uh, they're setting up down there, putting up flashlights and stuff. But that's all right, the flatheads swim over here too. Really? Hey, do you want to go to Tennessee in, Mar in May? Yes. Well, my wife said she wants to go. There's a big, um, uh, Dam River Boys just told me that there's a, uh, going to be a big meet and greet in May in Tennessee for all the catfish community YouTube channels. Yes. It'd probably be a good opportunity to grow my channel. Birthday trip. Birthday trip for my wife, she said. I really want to go fishing down there, too. I've talked to uh, Kayak Catfish, uh, Justin. I've talked to him quite a bit. Not saying that he'd take me fishing, but maybe he'd give me a spot where I could go catch a catfish from the bank or something while I was down there. That'd be pretty cool. And they got way bigger stripers down there than we do here. I think their um, their lakes and their rivers, they run off into the ocean, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's why. Uh-oh. Yep. Hey, that white rod right there. It's doom, 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 doom. Mm, that's a big bait. If he's getting scared, if he's getting scared, that's a good sign, guys. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that, that white rod. Look at it. 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 He's going to have to take it before I get up and set the hook on it. He needs to take it all the way down. That's a big bait. I got a big hand, guys. It's like it's like a 10-inch hand. I can palm a basketball. Well, I was showing him that bait this si next to my hand for size comparison. And, uh, but it... You know, honestly, a 10-pound uh, flathead to choke that down, but come on, baby. If he chokes that thing, I'm going to be freaking stoked. Especially being on a live, that'd be cool. I already won the jelly bean contest. At, uh, the, we went to this church. They dropped a, they had a helicopter fly through and dropped like 3,000 eggs or something like that. 7,000 eggs for 100 kids. 300 kids. My wife will keep me corrected. Anyways, uh, they have this jar of jelly, of jelly beans. <coughs> and they uh, they had this little form. You fill it out. You put your address on it, your phone number, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I was sitting there and in my head. I don't know why, but the first three digits of my phone number popped up, 525. And in my head, I was like, 525, no, 523. 532. Anyway, so I put down 523. Boom. One. So I feel like it's good luck not to catch a flathead. If I can win the jolly bean con jelly bean contest, I should be able to catch a big flathead. You got your bracelet on? Yep. Yeah, Justin is a good channel. I used to pay for his monthly perks. I probably did that for like six months or something. And uh, even though I've quit, he'll still answer my comments if I uh, comment to him and stuff. And he, he used to shout my channel out all the time too on his lives. He actually helped me to grow when uh, a long time ago, uh, my first couple hundred subscribers was because of Justin. 
He didn't have to do that. He just did. He shouted me out multiple times. You want a cigarette, woman? Yep. Last time we were out, uh, my my uh, my picture on my channel, that one where I'm holding up the big blue cat, my wife had just bought me the rod all the way on the farthest end, the Catfish Pro or whatever, and I, as soon as I got it, I yanked all the 20-pound test off it. I put 30-pound mono, Berkeley Big Game on there, Put a 10 aught jackhammer hook on there. And uh, I had some shad that were about, a, I don't know, 10 or 11 inches long, big shad. Some big gizzards. And we went up to this 40 foot hole at this uh, railroad trestle and it was raining, it was February 2nd. And I got a early, uh, I got a early Valentine's present. And anyway, I saw that rod, don't, and it, it thumped and I was like, they were talking about leaving. And I was like, we ain't leaving until that rod goes down. It already got thumped. And uh, we got to get that fish. And so we sat there and about like, I don't know, was it like 10 minutes later? Like probably like 10 minutes later. It was raining and freezing. It, it was raining and freezing. <laughs> she, she has to bring that up. Anyway, that rod just and doubles down and it was freaking cool, man. Spousal. Same thing that white rod did. She said it's spousal abuse. She had a, she's got a TikTok. I don't know, what's the name of your TikTok? I think it's like Tiffany Wilson or something. Anyway, she always got these videos, uh, Life with Michael. So if you search Life with Michael, you'll probably find them because I'm always doing some random crazy stuff. My ADHD gets the best of me in every aspect of life except for fishing. And anyway, uh, she was on there and we was out there with the David and my wife and she, she said it's uh, spousal abuse and David abuse. Cause I was making them sit out there in the rain, freezing cold. I'm helping them build a good immune system, you know? I don't want them to stay tough. It's x-ray tiff. Oh, her TikTok's x-ray tiff. Man, I just want that freaking rod to yank over. I'm watching that middle rod, and you know how that goes. The rod you're watching ain't gonna be the one that goes. There's a guy that I used to work with, and he 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 eats every big catfish he catches, and uh, and but I, he always talk, told me why am I throwing him back, and I told him because I want to catch him again. And I'm not kidding you, this dude he comes down here every year. He has a special. There's a handrail that goes across here. He has a special little deal that he's got built that uh, clamps onto these handrails and holds his rods. And he comes down here and he only fishes with perch. He tell you a flathead won't eat nothing different and uh one of them kind of old cantankerous bastards and uh anyway he comes down here and every year he catches a 50 60 pound flathead and a couple of them and he eats every last one of them he catches be coming to work with uh, tubs of meat and get passing them out and stuff and uh, i used to do that when i was younger and even right when me and my wife got together we would do that to like some 10 pounders and stuff but honestly I don't like big cubes. I don't like having to cube it up. I like having like a, I know that's gonna hurt some feelings when somebody else watches this, but I like eating largemouth bass. And uh, my wife, she likes catching bass, but I only go bass fishing pretty much in the winter time. And it's cause once the palm water gets cold and like all the bugs die off out of them and stuff like that, or go into hibernation or whatever they do. What? Yeah. And uh, so if they're good, clean meat, they're the perfect size to fry. And we don't really, we don't keep anything over two pounds. So we're just doing the bigger bass a favor. And the funny thing is, is we catch five and six and seven pound bass on rooster tails while everybody else is throwing a bunch of fancy stuff. We get a pack of blue fox rooster tails for four or five bucks at Walmart and go catch the same fish out of some strip pits back where I grew up at. And we go down there and load up a stringer full of them. We'd be running through the pasture, running from the farmers that own the strip pits, too. Uh, you left me. Uh, hey, you got to run faster. Run fast. Those are, the only, those are the only two options when you're trespass fishing now. Is 
the, a couple years ago, they had this shut down for construction. Yeah, for sure. That's the thing about the J hooks. That's really one of the reasons that I only use those. Is uh, my grandpa, my Papa Charlie, he owned a bait store, and he's got pictures of fish hung up on the wall, and they were all pinned up there. And I'm talking about this is back, uh, back in the '60s and '70s, and uh, they didn't have circle hooks, or they weren't a thing around here back then. And uh, so I always tell people, if it wasn't in my grandpa's tackle box, I don't need it. Uh, anything that wasn't in his tackle box, I don't need it to catch fish. And uh, a lot of times, uh, the flatheads and stuff, again, I'm not knocking anybody that uses circle hooks. I've tried them, and I like I said, I like the gomakatsu demon circles. Uh, but I take and put them in pliers and a pair of vice grips, and I give them an offset. I like them better with an offset. But they don't need it. I caught plenty of fish with that. I don't have an offset. It's just a personal preference kind of ordeal and uh oh that lightning i don't know if you guys are picking that up or not yeah that was lightning you watch i'll be out here by myself in a minute when it starts raining hey look on your phone and look at the weather That's another thing about this dam. I was talking about it wasn't my favorite earlier. And another reason for that is that, uh, um, there's a four wheeler park and ATV park and it gets kind of annoying after a while. Use J hooks above the dams on the, heck yeah, man. I just, uh, I've, I said it in my video. To, I used to say it a lot in my videos being a smart ass, but Every time I'd reel in a fish and I had it hooked in the side of the mouth, I'd be like, oh, look, just like a circle hook, right in the side of the mouth. You know, because if you see your rod going over, and I said that, I, if you see your rod going over and you set the hook, more than likely you're going to get it inside of the mouth, you know, or the top of the mouth. And, but uh, I don't say that no more just because I don't want to give nobody a hard time. If they like catching fish, I don't care if they like using freaking pantyhose and yarn and, uh, you know, toothpicks to catch fish, if that's what they're into. That's our business. And, but, uh, I just, I'm, I, it took me a long time to start catching fish on circle hooks because I would always set the hook because that's what I've been used to doing all my life. And I just like how it feels. Like, if you got a, like, especially on braided line, when you reel down and then you yank on it and you can feel it through the line, you pop, pop. Yeah, you told me that earlier. That's, that's crazy, but I guess there's a science behind it. Uh, I guess if, uh, you know, like I said, when you see the rod go down, you're gonna set the hook. And But sometimes you don't see the rod go down and if they swallow it, that's where the J hook comes in. But I'm, I'll tell you, uh, uh, that white rod's going tap tap again. But anyways, uh, I'll tell you, I had a, I had a 500 gallon fish tank and uh, I gut hooked a bullhead with an eagle claw bait holder hook and uh, I stuck him in the fish tank anyways. And after about two weeks, and I don't know how it happened, he was bleeding out of his throat and everything. I didn't even know if he was gonna live. He was gonna be flathead bait. I mean, I had largemouth bass, crappie, and all kinds of stuff. I'd buy golden shiners and put them in there and feed them. And uh, anyhow, that, that catfish, he regurgitated that hook. One day I just came home from work and I looked in the fish tank and there was a hook sitting on the bottom of it. Sitting on the bottom of the tank with about that much line on there. And uh, now look at that rod, it was going again. But anyways, uh, so those fish, they got a way to get those hooks out of there. I don't know how they do it, but like I said, he that bullhead had regurgitated it somehow. Hey, what's that Chesapeake Bay like anyways? I want to look it up now. Probably go watch a whole bunch more of your videos that way I can check it out. Do you like eating the stripers or do you turn them back loose?
some of these people started thinning out out here. The best fish you can get. But if you ever get a chance to go to North Carolina, uh, if you ever get a chance to go to North Carolina, you should go like there's like uh, this one. What was that boat called? The Shamrock. The Shamrock, they take you out for like three or four hours. Costs like 45 bucks a person. You can bring your own rod and reel or whatever. And uh, they just take you out and they just, they'll, they'll take the boat out and they'll let you drift around. And you're using like a double drop, drop rig or dropper rig or whatever. And you shrimp and squid and different stuff. You should try that out, man. That is freaking fun. What? Well, you can just pee right here on these rocks. Yeah. Hey, uh, damn river boys. I appreciate you guys coming on the channel. I think I'm gonna cut it off now because I'm gonna have to have light whenever, um, whenever I, uh, yeah, okay. Then you already know it's fun, ain't it? Yep. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this off. I got like 39% on my battery life. And I, it, when I turn my camera around the other way and I just record the fishing, it'll, it'll turn on the light on the phone. So I'm gonna do that. Hey, I really appreciate you sticking around and watching the video and commenting and talking to me. And uh, I'm gonna hit you up on some of your videos, okay? Peace.